Welcome to Architecting Startups with Google Cloud, a series where we showcase the latest and greatest startups and how they're building and deploying their production-ready workloads with GCP. I'm Filippo Madella, and I lead one of the customer engineering teams here at Google. And today I have the privilege of welcoming Hannes Hapke. He leads the machine learning work at Digits. And Digit's mission is to revolutionize how business owners and accountants think and use and interact with their financial business transactions. So welcome, Hannes, to the show. And thanks once more for joining. It's great to be here. I'm thrilled to share how Digit is using Google Cloud to build its core products. Thank you for having me. No, it's our, it's our pleasure. So can you cover a little bit what Digit does and what's the story behind it? Digis is on a mission to build the next generation of finance tools by leveraging our proprietary model. The goal of our living model is to empower accountants and business owners with insights in real time. Instead of waiting until an accountant reviewed the books, Digis provides answers in seconds, and we use a number of machine learning models under the cover to make that possible. Okay, so to start, Hans, can you share what's the experience of a user when they log in on your platform? What do they see? Uh, what are the main features that you offer? Design and usability is paramount at Digits. At the same time, machine learning is central to the mission of Digits. From the moment Digits ingests a banking transaction until a user sees the transactions a few moments later in the dashboard, a number of machine learning models have processed the transaction. For example, we extract key information from the transaction to match the the exact transaction with related historical transactions. When a business owner logs into Digits, they experience a holistic view of their business. Each transaction is annotated with information about the related entities, which allows us to provide rich statistics and sophisticated search experiences. When accountants use Digits, they can generate in-depth reports for their clients, which go way beyond the typical PDFs. At the same time, Digits is cross-checking transactions against historical patterns to alert accountants about potential mistakes. Well, so it's very cool. So on your website, it says you're, you're, you're bringing accountants from the future. <laughs> so machine learning looks like it's the foundational piece behind uh, your platform. So let's, of course, focus on that. Can you talk a little bit about the, the overall machine learning workflow and like the life cycle in general that you approach uh, within Digits? Our machine learning projects consist out of two major phases. Phase one is the experimentation phase. Our data scientists and machine learning engineers can use any open source tool they like. They could be PyTorch, TensorFlow, JAX, Scikit-Learn, whatever gives them the biggest speed boost to prove that a machine learning model can solve a business problem. Once we get to the proof of concept stage, and we have proven that a machine learning model can solve that business problem, then we take that model and turn that into a production machine learning workflow. This is what we do in phase two. Phase two consists out of three components. Number one would be creating a machine learning pipeline. This allows us to reproduce a machine learning model at any given point in time by anybody on the team without as little context as needed. Here we're using Vertex pipelines, TensorFlow Extended, and other tools to standardize our production of the machine learning models. Once the pipeline completes the production of those machine learning models, they get registered with a registry. And from there, we have a number of actions that consume those machine learning models. One action could be a batch process. We use, we use Vertex um, batch prediction processes to spin up resources, um, predict a number of um, data sets for us, and then return the results. The second consumer would be online endpoints, which consume the models, load them into a microservice, and then downstream processes can consume those models. Major consumers of our machine learning models are data flow jobs in GCP. Oh, thank you for the overview of this life cycle. And as we talked about it, uh, it's historically like if you're an ML engineer and you're going from the experimentation phase all the way to your deployment, you know, to production, it's like historically, it's been a challenge to make it at least loosely coupled. And I see you having a great experience with like TFX and Vertex AI in general. So let's double click on the ML pipeline phase. Can you just go over a little bit how you set that up currently? Yeah, so when we have a proof of concept and we want to turn this into a production model, 
we use TFX to express the pipelines. So a pipeline would ingest um, data from various sources. That could be a GCS path. That could be a BigQuery data set or a feature store. We then pre-process the data to whatever the model needs to train. So we would, I don't know, generate tokens out of um, unstructured text or standardize some values. Then we scale it out. The uh, we scale out the training part with Vertex training jobs. And that allows us to use different hardware types for whatever the model needs. Um, once the model is produced, we then push it back to various data flow jobs running on TFX or running with TFX to analyze the model and compare it to the last produced models. And then once everything is confirmed to be an improvement, we register the model through the pipelines with the metadata store and the model registry. Thank you. And if we go now to talk about Vertex AI, which is Google Cloud's end-to-end -end integration uh, platform for data and ML and AI in general. And we know that ML ops is, it's again, another challenging aspect, right? When you go from a specific domain of knowledge, which is data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and then you're moving now to infrastructure, uh, certainly requires something more, like more skills or a, a bigger team. So how has Vertex uh, AI taken care of your, of your operations today? Can you go a little bit over like your previous experience and your experience now? You can run TFX pipelines on a number of orchestrators. Um, they can run on Apache Beam. They can run on Apache Airflow um, and Kubeflow pipelines in a Kubernetes environment. And we have previously maintained our own cluster and run our pipelines in that setup. But in such a configuration, we always had to provision the hardware. So for example, if you wanted to um, train on a newer GPU, then we would have to provision this into our own Kubernetes cluster. And uh, that required a lot of overhead on the team. So by moving to Vertex Pipelines, we got the chance to just use a managed service to get access to all the hardware. And at the same time, it removed the constraints so we could basically we can scale all pipelines and retrain all models at the same time something which we couldn't have done in our own cluster previously well it's really great to hear i know also that amongst the features of vertex ai you've been talking about the vertex metadata and i want can you share a little bit more about it how does that help you and i know you you, you kind of consider like an underrated uh, feature, right? <laughs> right. Um, I, I truly think that the metadata store is an, is an underrated tool within the Vertex portfolio. Um, it sort of lives alongside those pipelines, um, but it is basically what I consider it as an insurance policy for machine learning engineers. So every time we run a pipeline, the components of all the pipelines are talking to the metadata store every time they start operating and when they complete the operation. So we for every data set, every model, or every analysis we create or touch, we get a record in our metadata store. And there will be moments when the question will come up, why did a model produce a prediction in a certain way? And it's not easily explainable. In that moment, we go back to the metadata store to reproduce the model with the artifacts we have, we have stored in our record system, which is the metadata store. And then we can start unwind the question and like, um, reproduce the model. And so it doesn't happen very often, but when it happens, it is extremely useful to have the metadata as well. Thank you. So we talked about the machine learning lifecycle, the pipelines, and I would like to hear more about the deployment phase. Could you expand a little, a little bit more on, on the specifics on how that works within digits today? Absolutely. So once we um, run a machine learning pipeline, and the pipeline outputs a machine learning model, we then register the model with our model registry. In that moment, a data scientist or machine learning engineer will be contacted, gets a message that was like, hey, the model is ready. Please validate that everything is according to uh, what you had expected. The pipeline itself in our setup is generating a number of reports. We can then study those reports and make the decision whether we want to promote this model or not. And once we promote the model, we have a really sweet um, CI setup where we can promote those models to Vertex endpoints. Previously, we had hosted our own GKE cluster. And uh, within the cluster, we had a 
a node pool just for our machine learning models. But there we felt like we were constrained by the, the, the overhead we had to provide to run those models. So with Vertex endpoints, we can now scale our machine learning operations without the infrastructure concerns. And that um, freed up the small team heavily, and we can focus more on the machine learning side than on the infrastructure side. OK, so if we talk about then the, the endpoints, like now you're consuming your model, how's that been working for you? What's the experience? Like, what did you, why are you choosing uh, to use web endpoints? So the, the endpoints give us the great opportunity to scale the operations. Um, we have um, machine learning models. They get consumed online. They get consumed on a 24-7 basis. And then we have a number of batch jobs running behind the scenes. Um, and so sometimes everything happens at the same time. And the Vertex model endpoints allow us to scale those operations. If we need more firepower to provide predictions fast to our clients, the endpoints scale automatically. We don't have to worry about it. Uh, we don't have the overhead of maintaining auto scaling for our Kubernetes clusters, etc. So this is this was a real uh, win for the machine learning ops team or the machine learning team, so that we don't have to worry about the ops on this on our side. Okay, and so I always like to share a little bit the experiences and learnings that that we have in these conversations. I know you've been doing this for a while. Uh, and you also have written books about it. If you if you get your experience with digits or in general, and if you were to share ex any learnings and opportunities uh, that you think if you could go back and, and, and do differently or anything that, for example, digits as well, wants to invest in the future as far as uh, your infrastructure or the open source community or the, the futures within the platform itself, what, what would those be? I think the investment into ML ops or ML engineering, when we talk about all the pipelines and deployment endpoints and metadata stores, that is a large investment. Um, let's be honest, that, that took weeks and months to set everything up and to tie all the products together into a really seamless workflow on our end. But that investment is paying off right now as we speak, because now we can reproduce those models. Uh, we have uh, single points where Everybody on the team finds information around machine learning models. Um, we can scale models in depending on the demands. So this is it took it was a, a quite the engineering effort to put this all together, um, but it was greatly assisted by all the different Vertex products. And so we see um, this investment now paying off with like faster times to market for our machine learning models and fewer concerns around all the infrastructure and. Uh, all the deployment issues we had previously. At the same time, we also learned that machine learning models, they're very closely coupled to the design and vice versa. So we work very closely together with our design teams. Um, and sometimes the designers have questions for us. It was like, hey, we have an online form. Can we predict some things um, to make this form more seamless? And at the same time, sometimes we have questions for the designers and say, like, hey, we have a machine learning model here. We would like to um, get a feedback loop into the product. And how can we design this so that is the experience for the customers is very seamless? And I feel like sometimes machine learning projects fail because the design phase is not considered. And that was one of the major learnings that the close relationship with the design team, they're closely coupled to all the machine learning projects. They're part of the team, or everybody's part of that team. And they're not like siloed into two different entities. I, I actually love those insights. And the fact that you mentioned it's really overlooked the, the design part of the machine learning lifecycle. Uh, and thinking about it, right? So many ways our data or like our models can just be skewed uh, in, in kind of influence a lot on the output just because the way we're communicating with the users on the front end. And it's not uh, in line with the actually the actual purpose of the of, of the machine learning goal itself. So that's super insightful. And again, we're getting to the end of our chat. Thank you so much for for joining us here. If people want to hear more about digits, how where they should go? They can go to digits.ml for ML related stories, or check out digits.com to learn more about digits in general. 
Thank you so much, Hannes, for the conversation today once more. We just heard how Digits is using GCP, specifically Vertex AI, to build their ML solutions and scale their ML pipelines. If you enjoy this conversation, please make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe so you can hear more.